Hello, I recently purchased a new hard drive. Um, my old hard drive was an Evo 840, Samsung Evo 840. And I want to repurpose this drive now. I'm going to shove it into a MacBook Pro as it's got an old mechanical style drive and I think it'll benefit from an SSD upgrade. And it's come to the point where I need to basically wipe off the any of the old data, get it all securely erased so that I can put it into this new MacBook. So I've been having a little read around online the best ways to do this and what I've found is that the actual manufacturer will usually include a little toolkit. So I'll just show you here. This is Samsung's. There is a slightly newer version but I were having a few issues so I thought I'd download one of the older ones to see if it was version specific or if it was something to do with a hard drive. So I've got the Evo 840 connected up via USB carry as you can see there and in order for us to be able to basically securely erase this it actually has to be connected via SATA and that's why it's showing that this drive is not supported so to me to connect it via SATA I'd have to unplug everything from my machine and connect it via a SATA cable whereas I actually want to do it via a USB cable so what we're going to do is we're basically going to use a thing called Parted Magic so this program does cost a little bit I'm not affiliated by them in any way shape or form but I have used this in the past and it is pretty good if we just google Parted Magic Go to the downloads page and then on here as you can see that's the latest version it's only eleven dollars so i would recommend you purchase this i've already downloaded it i've got the slightly older version but so once we've got that you've downloaded it should end up with an iso file and what we're going to do is basically burn this to a usb which will then allow us to boot up off of it and then from there we will be able to securely erase this drive via a USB caddy rather than via SATA. To do this, what we need is a thing called Rufus USB. And what this does is basically it'll just burn the ISO. There are a few out there, but I personally like Rufus. So if we download version 3.8, we'll launch that up. Just click yes on the UAC if that pops up. So I've got, I'm doing it on the other screen, so I'm just going to drag that across. Do you want to allow Rufus to check for application updates online? Yeah, why not? Okay, so we've got that up there now. The next thing that you're going to need to do is grab a USB drive. Now, I grabbed a 2 gig one, as that's the one which I had laying around. I can't see it needing anyone any bigger than this, as the actual original ISO file is nowhere near this size. So we've got that in there. As you can see, 2 gig F drive, it's called 2 gig. Bear in mind that when we click start down at the bottom, it will delete all the data off this. So just make sure that there's nothing else on there. So we select that. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to select where the ISO is located. So if I click select, you'll see that in there I've got part of Magic 2019 If I click open on there, it should automatically select all this for you. I'm just going to change the volume label of this to parted magic you don't necessarily have to do this but i would recommend it as it would just be a little bit easier to figure out what it is and click start so on here the image you've selected is an iso hybrid image this means that in written either an iso image file copy the mode or dd image disk image mode rufus recognizes an iso image mode so that you can have full access to the drive after writing it however if you encounter issues during boot you can try writing this image again in dd image mode we'll go for iso image mode as that's the one that's recommended I'm not quite sure what the difference is, but let's have a give it a go. There it says again that all the data that's on here is going to be destroyed, so just click OK. And just wait for that to finish. So once this is actually finished, we will be switching over to my laptop as I'm going to connect it up to that. And I'll show you the process. Basically, we just need to boot from this external drive rather than booting from the OS. Now, the next step will be different from every machine. It's not too difficult to get it to boot from the other drive. Usually, you can do it by pressing F12. If not, you can go into the BIOS and swap it so that the USB drive is the first boot device. There's multiple ways of doing so. I would suggest that you go to the manufacturer of your motherboard as that will usually tell you. Or if you've got like a Asus... ZX whatever something like that there should be a guide on ASUS website for that or you'll be able to find some information online if you do struggle actually getting to boot from this USB drive so once this is complete I'll unplug it I'll plug in the USB carry and we'll continue on the camera
Okay, so that's completed now. So we're going to swap over to the camera. I'm sorry about the quality. It's not going to be quite as good as this screen recording, but I'm not going to have the capability to record. So yeah, I'll catch you over there. Okay then guys, so I have my SSD and it's USB caddy connected up to this machine. I've also got the USB that we've just created plugged into the side of the laptop. So what we're going to do, is just going to power it on. Sorry about the quality this, by the way. I'm going to try and get it the best I can. So on this machine, to interrupt normal startup, I hit enter. And then I'll get this menu that pops up. And what I want to do currently is press F12 to select the boot device. Move that a little higher just so you can see the screen properly. Just focus that. So on here, as you can see, I've got two USB hard drives on here. That one there and that one there. The SMI USB disk is the one which I want to select. If you've got multiple ones, it might say the brand or something like that. This one that I've got is a weird unbranded USB sticks. It was one that I had lying around. So we just hit enter on that. Now on this next screen, what we want to do is basically, we might as well just have it running from memory, running from RAM as it says there. So just select default settings, 64 runs from RAM, just hit enter. And just wait for this to load up. Okay, so once you're at this screen, just select your language. This is for the time zone. I'm in the UK, so I'm gonna go for Europe, and we're just gonna pick London. Click OK. So once we're on this screen, we go across to Erase Disk, and then we go on to Sanitize ATA Devices. And then you'll see we've got in there Samsung S SD840 series. We just tick that, click continue. And then you see there it says allow this utility to sanitize the above listed devices and click start erase. Okay, now that appears to have finished. To be quite honest with you, it doesn't take that long with an SSD as they work slightly different from mechanical drives. So this literally should have done the trick. We just click OK on there. And that's pretty much it. That SSD will now be erased and that should basically make all the data that's contained on there irrecoverable. I mean, to whatever standards, of course, that everybody believes. It's a little bit of a myth online. Some people say that there's no way of fully deleting data unless you completely physically destroy the disk. I don't plan on destroying this disk. I'm going to be reusing it. So for me, this did the trick. Okay, so we're back on my PC now. The SSD, like I said, finished erasing. What I wanted to do was just connect it back up to this machine just to show you what it'll appear like. So what we need to do is going to create and format hard disk partitions. So if I was just typing format, as you can see there, create and format hard disk partitions. Open that up and I'm just going to drag this onto this screen. This is the prompt that you're going to see up here. And what you want to do, just put it as GPT, click OK. And then I'm just going to drag that window over there. If you scroll down here, you'll see that is the disk there with basically unallocated space, nothing on there, so it's been wiped. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to try and recover some data from this just to check how efficient it was to see if I can actually get anything back or anything like that. So I mean I'm not a data recovery expert so I'm just going to put a partition back on there. Click next, next, next. Like that, go back to NTFS. And I'm going to be using a tool called EaseUS or EaseUs or whatever it is, I'm not sure. I have used that in the past and I found it to be pretty good. I've downloaded the trial. So we'll launch up that software now. It's just launching. Right, okay, so if I drag this over here, as you can see, we've got all my disks. That one there is the one which I boot off of. Volume F, I believe, is the one which we've just restored back. So I'm just gonna click on the scan button. So we'll just leave this to scan, see if it can pick anything up.
Okay, so that has actually finished now. I mean, it's coming up there with lost files, existing files. Let's see if we can go into any of them. In fact, looking at that, it doesn't like we can go into anything, so it looks like it's not recovered anything. All we've got is the actual file system, system volume information that it's recreated since we formatted it, which is great. I mean, that to me shows that, you know, like I say, I'm not a data recovery expert, but I have used this tool before in the past when I've had people come to me and say, oh, I've deleted this, I've lost that, and we've used this software, and it's brought it back straight away. So that to me shows that it's gone through, it's actually cleared it off. I mean, I know for a fact this hard drive, I've been using it religiously for the past probably maybe four years, maybe a little bit longer, and, well, actually no, around four or five years. And I know for a fact this has had all my personal data, it's had everything on there, and to me that shows, well, that shows that it works pretty well. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I mean, it would be interesting to try it with some other type of software as well to try and recover it. But like I say, I'm just using a generic one that's easily obtainable online. This one's actually in a trial mode. And if I actually did find anything that I wanted to recover, I'd most likely have to activate it. Again, I'm not affiliated by these. I mean, to be fair, I've not really shown that their software works. But like I said, I have used it before. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something. If you liked it, please do a thumbs up below, subscribe to the channel, it really, really helps, I am a new YouTuber, and yeah, thanks a lot.